Welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm Paul Hobden, and with me today is David Donde from Truth Coffee. Welcome, David. Hi. Tell us a bit more about the Truth Coffee story. Well, I've got involved in speciality coffee about a decade ago. Um, thought I knew a little bit about coffee, had a business, and I could make the tallest ice cream cone style cappuccinos with the sprinkles and the most bitter. And I went on a trip to New Zealand and I realized we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, I didn't go straight into it. I ended up buying a country hotel. And uh, the benefit of the country ho hotel was 100% capacity on the weekends and zero during the week. So I took up coffee roasting during the week and the rest, as they say, is history. Your model is around distributing good coffee. Yeah, um, it, it, it wouldn't be obvious on the face of it. Um, we've got our big headquarters that we've just built, which is a big pub public cafe. The point being that you need an experience point with, with the luxury brand we felt and doing loads of adverts in some kind of consumer or business-to-business -business magazine would just be a frivolous expense. So it was really trying to walk the talk, and uh, it's the face of our, of our wholesale business. But really, the, the model is supplying other restaurants, other cafes, hotels. It's um, a competitive industry, a competitive market. Coffee itself was speciality coffee, and, and, and I think that's, that's our story, is we found a niche, which is, which is high-quality coffee. It's, it's my belief that you've either got to be the best or you've got to be the cheapest. Um, there's a lot of competition out there to be the cheapest, and the margins are very, very, very thin. On the quality end, things are a little different. People start paying a premium for things like brand, for quality in the cup itself, and for doing what we do. Have, have you noticed a change in kind of consumer behavior around the quality of coffee? When I started in speciality coffee, when I started roasting in 2004, nobody had a clue what I was doing, 2003, 2004. By the time I'd opened the, my first speciality coffee business in Cape Town in 2006, there were inklings on the outskirts on consumerism and getting into brands, but still nobody knew what, con what speciality coffee is. If we look at where we are today, in Cape Town, in the trendy circles, I would say there's probably a, a very strong market penetration where people understand and love and are passionate about coffee. Um, in the rest of the country, not so much. It's, it's really only starting to incubate. And so talking more about the, the quality, I'm sure not all of your, your customers uh, appreciate coffee in the same way as you do. I think that's a story about uh, the adoption cycle. And I, we've identified internationally that about 25% of people are what we call super tasters. And that's not the extraordinary sort of freaks who can you know, tell you what side of the hill it grew on. What, what we take it to mean is people who can actually taste things and, and, and make a decision based on what they taste. The other 75% tend to follow. So I, I don't know if this is a good coffee or not. Let me wait to hear what you think about it. A bit like choosing jeans, I guess. Yes. So that, that does play a big component of, of what we do. David, one of the things I notice on your website is that you say quality above all else. Yeah, you'll notice that we don't really have a mission statement, but we've got a philosophy, and our philosophy is quality above all else, and our philosophy is questioning everything that we do. It's just part of our belief that there's always an opportunity to do better and better and better, and we don't know the best way to do anything, and the only thing you can do is chase an objective like quality. And sustainability also plays a big part. Yeah, there are many companies that have sustainability as their end point, as their goal, and that seems a little irrational to me. You've got to choose what you're doing and, and where you're going, but sustainability is vital. If you're taking a, a decent long-term and medium-term view of your company, sustainability comes into it. If I want to have access to the best coffees, I've got to pay more to the producers and directly to the producers. I've got to, I've got to look at that whole supply chain. If times get tough and it's hard to get the hold of the best coffees, I want to be first in line. I want a relationship with those people already. But even down to the, the sort of takeaway cups that we use, you know, that sort of principle of first do no harm, our cups happen to be, and, and not by accident, completely biodegradable. Even the plastic lining inside the cup is plant-based material, the ink soya. It's just part of, of doing the right thing. Both in terms of quality and sustainability, how do you keep on with that when there's such pressure on margins? I. I think that the real pressure is on sales and, and winning customers' hearts. And I think margins are secondary to that. And again, it comes back to the principle of, are you going to chase price 
and be the cheapest or you're going to chase quality. And if you're going to chase quality, it, you've got to create a value chain. You've got to create added value or you don't have the right to charge a premium and you're going to get caught and deservedly so. So it, it's a question of always just improving and improving and improving and, and hopefully your customers will see a, a cause and be prepared to pay a little bit more for that. On winning customers' hearts, so you've created a very engaging and, and funky brand. Thank you. How much of that is your personality? I, I'd like to think that very little of it is my personality, but more team and something that, that we've created. Um, but I think my sort of single-mindedness at the quality of the coffee does pay off at, at some level. In building that team, how do you find people who share your passion? <laughs> Next question. I think I think that is the crux of most modern business internationally in every arena is is finding the right people, and I think the only answer is really being the employer of first choice is being known for what you do and the right people should want to come to you, and that's something we all struggle with and we eternally will. We spoke a little earlier about your model being distribution and having a retail front into it. Both of those must have some challenges. Um, how do you address the diversity in the business? Uh, we actually run each unit of our company as a separate business unit. And we look at each one individually with its challenges because often the challenges are at cross purposes. And we, I don't want to say we've corporatized or bureaucratized anything, but they are run as separate business units. And, and we actually break it up quite a bit further than most people would expect. One of the key things for us on the business-to-business -business model is sales, and separate to sales is after sales. It's not just acquiring customers, it's keeping customers, it's constant training, constant quality evaluation, and we've got a whole team around that. And similarly in the cafes, you know, they run as, as units and the managers have a lot of authority. David, where to next with Truth Coffee? I think uh, growth, a lot, lot of growth. I don't believe in growth for its own, own end, but uh, we've got both internal growth, our current customers starting to use a lot more coffee as the market, as the market matures, and acquiring a lot of new customers, both new ent entries into the market and people who are switching to our brand because they have the same beliefs as us, which is good news for us. So, and uh, I think a little bit of geographic penetration as well. We, although we've got a very good presence in, in, the, in Cape Town, in the Western Cape, and up the garden route at, I think, Joburg uh, for the coming year. That brings us on to our rapid fire round of questions. Shoot. <laughs> David, what's the best advice you've ever received? Do what you love, love what you do. Your best moment as an entrepreneur? I think it was opening up the new HQ and just having the love shown to us. I know that sounds a little hippie, but it was. <laughs> and the biggest mistake? Uh, trusting the wrong people. And what do you look for in people that you work with? Enthusiasm. Always enthusiasm. What do you need as an entrepreneur to succeed? The will to actually persevere through whatever comes your way. And your biggest inspiration as a small business owner? Needing to feed myself. <laughs> what would you do differently? Be braver. What makes South Africa a great place to be an entrepreneur? I think the fact that the roads aren't completely paved. There's, there's always space, there's always a place for a, new, for a new idea and the market's receptive to it. And what keeps you awake at night? Cash flow like everyone else. And what gets you going in the morning? Cash flow and a good cup of coffee. Thank you David. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We look forward to the coming weeks where we'll bring you more South African entrepreneurs in MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone.